All right, hi everybody. Welcome to the final 15 and 15, where for 15 minutes we tell you cool stuff um, and then you go have lunch. Uh, we're really grateful for, um, for the series and maybe at some point Martha can drop into the chat the resource page for 15 and 15 so you can check that out when you want. Today we are talking about Twitter. Um, and this will be a bit of a uh, introduction, and some of you are not necessarily at the introductory level, um, but I'm really going to start from square one, which is saying like today I am particularly talking about academic and professional Twitter, which is the same actual client, you know, it's the same app, you know, it's the same company, um, but we kind of talk about it as an, its own distinct thing. So lots of people use Twitter socially, um, social media, um, and they may use it for all sorts of things. The, the going joke is like, I'm not going to join Twitter and see people tweet, tweeting about their sandwiches. And I do believe many people on the call today have indeed tweeted about <laughs> things that they eat. So it's true. Um, I am talking about using Twitter uh, really differently, though, um, per, really in a targeted way to have um, both academic and career impact, whether that be to grow your own um, scholarly or professional profile, or whether it be to do the work that you want to do in the world and maximize the impact of that work. Um, so what I'm going to be looking at with Twitter is kind of three ways to think about using Twitter. The first is cultivating a Twitter practice. Um, I think it's probably not as healthy as like a yoga practice, but it's kind of a similar idea um, is that uh, Twitter is less a tool than a, a series of ongoing engagements that you have to um, engage in in order to get what you're going to get out of Twitter. Um, I'm also going to talk about curation in Twitter, so how you um, curate it in such a way so that Twitter is delivering to you the maximum scholarly and professional uh, value, and then how you can use uh, Twitter for academic, scholarly, professional collaborations. So for practice, what I'm really talking about here is like, um, if anybody has had this experience, especially working with students, if you join Twitter to see how it is, I can guarantee you it sucks because Twitter is really only a search engine and it will not be as good a search engine as something like Google. Um, so you don't get anything out of it except for the raw ability to search for stuff unless you create a practice where you are engaging pretty much daily in Twitter. Because when you do that, you build what we call a network. Sometimes we call it a PLN, a personal learning network. And your PLN needs to be robust in order for you to get um, the maximum value out of Twitter. So when I talk about a practice, um, I talk about thinking about it as reading things on Twitter for five to 10 minutes a day. Um, but I talk about reading visibly because you can you can be a lurker and just you know read what you see on Twitter and that's fine. You'll get information like you would from a search on the internet, but you won't develop a PLN unless you read visibly. So some ways of reading visibly include liking a link, just like, yeah, I saw that. That was cool. Like, right? Um, it also includes retweeting something or commenting on something like, oh, I read this and I disagree with your third point about blah, 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 blah. All of these are ways of becoming a visible reader on Twitter. And that is part of the way you grow your network. Um, you can also every day find and follow a couple of new high quality accounts in your field. An account can be a person, like, for example, if you study um, film studies, you might want to follow the um, Matt's uh, uh, Melikovo uh, um, account, which is his um, sort of more English film studies scholarly Twitter. So that could be a person like Matt, but it can also be an account like the Modern Language Association, for example. Um, so finding those accounts and following at least a couple of new ones a day. One way I usually start is I find someone who does what I do. So like when I first started in this job, I might find somebody like Joshua Eiler who runs a teaching center and I might look at who he follows and I might follow anybody there who looks interesting. Um, and again, uh, when you retweet something, so for example, somebody posts something smart, I can retweet that 
with a little comment of my own. This is a way of like, I don't necessarily have to write a blog post or publish an article, but I can get a little bit of credit for amplifying the kinds of voices that I think are important. And these are all ways of cultivating over time what becomes a network. If you do this very religiously, I would say in about six months, you could have a pretty robust network. If you do it sporadically, it might take as much as a year. Um, but after you do that kind of work, that's when you ask the question, is Twitter useful to me? Um, you, can't really, you can't really judge that unless you take that time with your Twitter practice. Um, also, curation is really important. If you don't want to get a feed full of people's sandwiches, you cannot follow accounts where people share their sandwiches. Um, so for example, if you're following me and I share a lot of sandwiches, you should unfollow me. And it's not like unfriending me on Facebook where people are like, why did you unfriend me on Facebook, right? Um, unfollowing me on Twitter is completely acceptable. It means this is not the kind of feed that I need. So for example, with faculty, um, the Colab account follows all Plymouth State faculty and staff that we are aware of on Twitter. But I personally do not follow people who are who I might adore at Plymouth if I don't think they bring something to the table for me academically and professionally, because my Twitter is not a social media account per se. It's a scholarly and professional account that I use mostly for my work. Um, so you have to really choose who you follow. That way, when you woke up and when you wake up in the morning and you look at your Twitter feed, it should be a perfectly curated feed um, of only information that is relevant to your field and your interests. If you're not getting that, it's really not Twitter so much that sucks, it's you that suck. And you know, I'm being facetious there, but really it's user error in that you haven't curated um, in order to get back what you want. Um, so again, learning this stuff is half of it, but if you really want to build the network, it's not just who you follow, it's who follows you. So you need to interact with people over time because now if I'm working on a project about how Twitter can be useful, I can put a tweet out in the world and say, does anyone have ideas on how Twitter can be useful? And three minutes later, I will have 60 examples of how Twitter can be useful academically. When I first started using Twitter, I would tweet out, does anyone have any ideas? And no one would answer me because only my dad was following me on Twitter, right? So um, if you really want to also get use back, um, or if you want to be able to publish your work on say uh, climate change and have that make an impact in the world, you need to have people looking at your feed um, interacting with it, suggesting it. And you do that by um, not just reading, but by interacting and building those, those networks. Um, so I would say the best way to get started is to commit to a month of a Twitter practice, but not to use the Twitter client at twitter.com, but instead to use um, a client like TweetDeck. And TweetDeck, um, the app is potentially going away soon, but you can still use it um, on your web browser. And this is what I recommend. It's in the handout that goes with today. So you don't need to do this now, but what TweetDeck allows you to do, and I'm opening up mine and you're probably gonna see lots of inappropriate content, but that's how life goes, especially since I threatened to quit my job yesterday on Twitter. And so you're gonna see a lot of stuff related to that. Um, but what TweetDeck allows you to do is to set up your, Twitter in useful columns. And this is a game changer. If you just look at tweets as they come in, you are going to be like, holy crap, I'm standing in a river and a whole bunch of you know, twigs and sticks are just coming down the river, slamming me in the face. And it's completely unorganized. I'm missing things. Like, how does this even work? If you can organize them by columns, it is so beautiful. So let me show you. I have one column here. These are my notifications. These are ways that people interact. So for example, when I say I'm quitting and I'm going to go live on Mars, Lindsay says, can I come to, right? That she's reacting to me, she's interacting with me. But I also have other columns here that I've set up. For example, here's a column set up for the hashtag higher ed. Anytime anybody tweets about higher ed using that hashtag, I will see it in this column. When I have five minutes free, I come over to this column and I see what people are doing in higher ed and I read um, information. 
I follow, for example, the EduColor hashtag. These are um, people of people who are tweeting about um, racism, race, nationality, and education. Um, there are other ways you can use columns. Here's one for OER, obviously a big, big one for me. Um, but you'll see if I go way over here, and, you, and when you first start this, I would suggest having just a couple of columns. You don't need 100 million like I have, but look at this column. It's a super fun one. This is um, the PSU Open Collab column. Um, so I can get all the PSU Open Collab stuff. So, I, so for example, this is the Remedial History Project. This is run by one of our colleagues in the collab, um, uh, Kelsey Eckert, right? Um, I, you can see here, um, I, I follow the CDC interview, but here's Alyssa, right? She is a librarian here at Plymouth State. Most of the people in this column are gonna be Plymouth State people. So you can open a column for the collab and basically just see Plymouth State content. You can follow um, a column that's just Plymouth State. You can follow your um, organizations in your field, uh, anything you want. So um, setting up a tweet deck, if you don't know what you're doing, takes about a half an hour to figure it out. Um, or it takes about five minutes to come to the collab and have us help you set up a tweet deck with the kinds of columns that would be helpful to you. Um, so my suggestion um, is to consider making a Twitter practice for one month, to consider instead of using Twitter, to use TweetDeck, um, and to make sure that when you set up your Twitter, you have the basics in place before you start doing anything. So that means you have a profile picture, either yourself or you know whatever you think represents you professionally, maybe a hurricane or something, um, but a picture of yourself, a bio that is professional, that explains who you are, um, and then you commit to using it to interact. Um, if you need help setting up your tweet deck, I absolutely suggest just popping in and we'll set up the columns for you. Um, and then you can experiment with it. On the handout for today, um, it'll kind of walk you through the steps of like, make your account, open up some columns in tweet deck, commit to a practice where you do these three or four things every day. How much time do you have to invest per day? I'd say, five minutes to start building your network. I tend to spend now probably about a half an hour a day on Twitter. And that's about the amount of time I would spend, say, you know, reading news in my field. I wish I had more some days, like on the weekends, I might spend a couple hours reading content off Twitter. Um, I'm not reading tweets. Tweets, funny, not helpful, right? What I'm reading are the, the tweets lead me to the content that is linked. So when I say I'm reading off Twitter, I mean I am reading, you know, newspaper headlines and clicking on the ones that are most important to me. So I would say five minutes a day to start building your network, more like a half an hour a day if you really want to start, um, you know, having impact and learning more about about your field. Um, it's also perfectly fine if you can't do it daily to, you know, leave it till you have an hour on a Friday to to do some work. But um, Twitter is completely useless for the most part until you build that PLM, that personal learning network. And I can't tell you how powerful it is now. Um, the Open Collab, a whole consulting business that I run, a new field for me in open education and technology, all of this happened through professional development and learning on Twitter. Um, Twitter has all the same problems as other social media. It's corporate controlled. Um, that it has algorithms at work that I don't appreciate. There's all sorts of negatives. There are safety issues, bullying. On the um, on the handout, there's an app about academics and safety on Twitter. That being said, I would not be doing anything that I do today if I hadn't invested in this work. So if your interest is in um, public scholarship, growing your professional reputation, or becoming more current in your field, I really can't recommend it enough. With that, I am going to uh, end the recording, but happy to stick around, chat, answer questions. Um, but remember to check out the handout if you really think you might want to give it a go. And that's what I got.